Hi guys and welcome to Yoga for BJJ. Uh, my name is Sebastian and this is my good friend Miha. We're gonna sh uh, take you through a very basic but really juicy class uh, for our hips. Uh, so start laying down on your back, uh, wide knees and grab the inside of your shins. So outside or inside just grab your shins. Um, I like keeping my feet close, but this depends on your proportions. So just lay down with your back flat and let your knees open out to the side. We're going to stay uh, for about a minute, a little bit more than a minute in each pose. So the first few breaths you use to kind of ease your way into the pose. And then uh, when you feel comfortable, then you start breathing deeply to relax your nervous system and get a really deep and nice stretch. So inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Do that a few more times. Let the weight of your legs stretch your groin. And if you, during the class, feel uh, parts of your body where you feel pain, try to just move a little bit out of that area. So you have many, many angles in your joints that you, you can use to stretch. So don't choose the ones which feels most uncomfortable. Like if you feel a good stretch in the, in the muscles, good. But if you feel any kind of quirky pain or awkwardness, just stare out of it and do a different variation. Take another big breath here in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Nice. And let's move into happy baby pose. So grab your feet. If you can't reach your feet and you have pants, then grab the, uh, the edges of your pants. You can grab your ankles as well. Uh, if you have socks, you can grab the socks. Uh, but we want our knees and feet as wide as possible. If your butt is lifting up, that's okay. But try to press your lower back down into the ground as well as your head. So don't lift up like a sit-up, more press down to flatten your back. And what's really what can be feel really nice here is to bend your right leg and stretch the left leg out a little bit. So you need really long arms if you want to be able to grab your feet here. So you can grab the ankles or calves. Switch to the other side. So kind of a karate kick from side to side. So this is a great open guard um, stretch to learn how to relax the upper body and stretch your legs while keeping your hips down. Because if your hips are lifting far up, it's easier for the, your opponent to lift your hips and stack you. So this is a, a great position to do uh, to improve your open guard game. Let's go a few more times from side to side and try to breathe deeply while you do this. The tendency when you're new is to hold your breath when you do new things. Uh, but in Jiu Jitsu and yoga, that's not favorable at all. So you need to learn to breathe all the time in through your nose now and exhale also through your nose. So slow but controlled kicking from side to side. Nice. All right, let's move on. Sit up in a squat. Uh, any variation with your legs that you want and you do not have to keep your heels down in the ground. It's perfectly okay to keep your heels up but if you want to put weight in your heels without having them touch the ground you can just roll something up under your heels if that's the angle that your ankles are telling you to follow. So, uh, But what you can do is you can keep pressing your knees out so instead of keeping the knees parallel and pointing forward try to push them away with your arms and move a little bit from side to side. When you add movement to the squat, you soften up both the ankle, the knee and the hip at the same time. And for me, this is one of the best lower back releases possible. I had back pain for many years and squatting was essential for me to release a little bit of pressure in the lower spine. Good, Feels good, yeah? 
If this is completely inaccessible to you, place your hands a bit forward so you have weight into the hands. So just place them down in the ground and lift your hips a little bit. Uh, so if you have uh, tight hips or knee pain, you can lean your body weight into the hands instead. And this is like a modified squat. So you don't have to put all the weight back into your heels for it to be a proper squat. Take five more breaths here, move around a little bit. I always like to stretch out my neck when I squat. Both sideways, up and down, and right to left. Nice. So no matter if you're at a yoga mat or not, step your right foot forward and your left foot back. So. Uh, that you have a long stance, it's almost like a plank, but most of your body weight is into your right foot. Uh, so first of all, wiggle your hips a little bit from side to side, just to feel it out a little bit. So hips right, hips left, while you're breathing. And then move your hips up a couple of inches and down a couple of inches, just to get out of your mind and into your body. So you're putting your attention away from what you're thinking about and more into the actual sensation of your, the front of your hips, the back of your legs. Mia here has been practicing a lot of yoga, but he also has been practicing a lot of training hard jiu-jitsu, so he's uh, really sore, yeah? So um, you don't have to ever compare yourself to anyone you see. Uh, so Mia was stiff as a rock when he started, and now he can get a parallel back leg. So you should inspire to get deeper into the stretch, but don't be anxious to do it fast. Like, be really patient with this. Okay, move sideways so that you straddle your legs straight. So hands are between you, uh, hands are between the feet, um, and you can point your toes slightly inward like Miha is doing, because when the toes are pointing out, you put pressure into the inner knees. So try to keep your legs as straight as you can. And if you can't reach the floor, Walk your feet as wide as you can and then place something under your uh, hands. For example, like a yoga block or just a book or anything that you have close to lift the floor up towards your hands. Take a few breaths here and try leaning a little bit forward. So instead of leaning back and dumping the weight into the heels, have some pressure into your toes. And I like doing a couple of push-ups here. So I inhale and I look up. And I exhale and I look forward. Just uh, some nice, easy movement for the spine. Because in this pose, the straddle pose, we want to keep our legs engaged, strong legs. And that will give the back uh, a chance to relax. Yeah? So take a couple of more breaths here. Static or moving is your choice. But try to keep a little bit of weight into the hands. And now turn the left foot to the left and walk the hands into the low lunge that we did on the right side. So it's just the same pose on the second side. Wiggle your hips from side to side. And if your wrists are hurting, just place your knuckles in the ground karate style or on your fingertips. Stretch your back leg straight. So the knee has a tendency to float down close to the ground here. So your job is always to push the knee straight to get a nice stretch on the front of the hips. Take three more breaths here, trying to lower your hips up and down a little bit. So a couple of inches up, a couple of inches down while you keep breathing. So even though you're in a deep stretch, try to breathe as deep as you can through your nose. Very nice. Let's go back to the straddle pose again. We're going to move back and forward between these poses. This time, place the right hand under your face and lift your left arm up. This is probably going to be really hard if you're strong and stiff. To get a straight line through the arms is super hard, so you don't have to go perfectly straight, but try to keep your legs straight. So straighten your legs so that your spine has something to twist away from. So you're not twisting your hips so much, you're more twisting the spine. Switch sides, so left hand down, take a couple of breaths with the right arm up as far as you can. And if you engage your fingers, if you stretch your fingers, you send a signal to the rest of the arms and the upper body to also stretch. So when you stretch your hand, you want to stretch your neck, your chest, and your spine. Go a couple of times from side to side. Just inhale when you go up, 
and exhale when you go down. Inhale up and exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. We're gonna try the opposite later. Inhale up and exhale down. Nice, move the hands forward again towards the right foot. This time lower your back knee down and move the right foot out a little bit towards the right so you have a wide stance between the hand and the foot. And then like Mia is doing here, place the hand on your knee and push your knee away. So you get a nice stretch to your right side there and make sure you're not crunching the shoulder up towards your ear but try to pull the shoulder back, spread your fingers and look towards the right. So you're twisting your body again towards the right. Take a deep breath here. And if you feel that you need to back off a little bit, if you feel something is twitching and, and uh, burning here, just back off 20%. It's as easy as that. So instead of just trying to go deeper all the time, try to be more relaxed where you are, and then you will get deeper as a side effect of relaxing. Take two more breaths here. Nice. Let's go, let's go back to the straddle pose, so hands to the center again. This time, let's uh, walk a little bit from side to side. So walk your hands towards your right leg. Uh, if you can't reach all the way there, no problem. Just maybe it's going to take 50 tries before you actually get all the way to touch your foot like Mia is doing. 50 times is like one, one yoga session a day for 50 days, switch to the other side. 50 days is like a month and a, a little bit more than a month and a half. So if you are a little bit patient and consistent, keep moving from side to side. Uh, it's going to take less than two months and you're going to be able to catch your foot if you're really persistent. So uh, don't be discouraged just because you haven't reached the black belt level yet. When you're a white belt, you have to be realistic and patient and dedicated. All right, one more time from side to side. Try to stretch your side body here. All the way over to the left side. Let's set up for the lizard twist on this side. So back knee down, left hand to the knee. Push your knee open and be strong through your right arm so you're not dumping your weight into the arm. You're lifting your weight up and away from your right hand. So engage your right side and stretch your left side. Take three deep breaths here. Look wherever you want to look, but try to create some evenness, some equilibrium between your foot, your hand and your knee, so you're not dumping all the weight into one body part. You're trying to create some uh, symmetry here. Nice. Let's go back to the straddle pose again. This time let's do some Kung Fu stretching. So bend one knee and move your body weight into that side. Okay, you're doing that one. That's okay too. Um, Let's do, let's do the Kung Fu stretching instead. So bend one knee and then lift the toes on the other side. Yeah, that's it. You don't have to go all the way down on the first run. You can stop halfway and place your hands down in the ground and alleviate some pressure from the legs by using your arms. So go from side to side a couple of times slowly. Nice. So you lift the straight leg, you lift the toes. Yeah, because then you get into the hamstring. So when you go to the center, it's inner thighs. And when you go down, it's the back of the thighs. This is an extremely good stretch for your hips, your thighs, and your, uh, like the whole hip and leg area is extremely beneficial from, uh, from this single exercise. Nice. Okay, let's go forward to the right leg again, lizard stretch. Place your back knee down. Try to reach for your back foot. So if you can't reach the back foot, no problem. If you can reach the back foot, grab it. Uh, so either this one or catch the front knee again like you did in the last round. Now inhale, look up. And exhale, go with your head down as close to your foot as you can. Okay, so inhale up adding some dynamic to the last stretch. Exhale down. Do three more on your own with the grabbing of the foot or without. Doesn't matter. As long as you feel a good stretch in the hips, you're golden. Deep breaths. Inhale as deep as you can and exhale down. 
Nice. Inhale up, last round. And exhale down. Okie dokie. Back to the straddle pose. Walk your hands over towards your left foot and try to place your left, either, either bend your left knee and just stretch over your left knee here as close to the leg as you can. If you want to take it further, place your left hand on your lower back and twist upwards. So look up and add some pressure with the hand there. Nice. Going over to the right side. So either just bend the right knee as much as you need to connect your upper body to your thigh hands on the leg or on the, on the floor, or catch your lower back and twist open towards the right. Nice. Go a couple of times from side to side. So as deep as you can with a bent knee or straight legs and twist open to the sky. Remember to breathe even in the most intense stretches. Okay, pointing your left foot forward, lizard stretch again, try catching your right foot with your left hand if that is impossible. You could use a jiu-jitsu belt to catch the foot, that's okay. Or just catch the front knee, inhale, look up, and exhale, fold forward and try to get your head to as close to your foot as you can. Inhale up, exhale down. Three more on your own, just go with your breath. Try to get out of your thoughts and into your body. One more. Nice. Back to the straddle one last time. Let's do some deep Kung Fu, Kung Fu stretching. So bend one knee and go as deep as you can. You can get up on your toes and lift your heel, but try to get your butt as far down to the uh, floor as possible. You can place one hand behind you if that works for you. Just go as deep as you can into the groin, into the knee, and put some weight into your bent foot. Yeah, go a couple of times from side to side. When you go deep, Always, always go slow. So don't go deep fast. That's where in, when injury happens. And we get enough injuries in jiu-jitsu uh, so that we, we should not be injured when we practice yoga. So be much more patient and relaxed when you practice yoga than when you spar and fight. One more time from side to side. Perfect. Sit down on your uh, butt, so walk your feet together. Sit down on your butt. Uh, and turn to face the camera, Mia, so they can see what you do with your legs. So wide feet, windshield wipe your knees from side to side by placing your hands behind you and then just let your knees fall over to one side and then to the other side. We do some dynamic first and then we're gonna do static. So just move your knees from side to side. Try to actually turn your thigh bone inside the hip socket. So you're turning and twisting your legs from side to side. And try to lift your chest. It's easier to breathe when you lift your chest than when you fold forward. So in this specific pose, try to lift your chest and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Do two more on each side. Feels so good. Even the camera guy is stretching now. It's so uh, inviting. <laughs> Stop when your left knee is forward and just grab onto your thigh, uh, your shin bone or wherever you can grab on and try to fold forward in a modified variation of the pigeon stretch. One of the best, probably the best stretch for the outer hip that I know because you're using gravity as your helping force here. And instead of trying to get your shoulder to your foot, try to lean over the knee. So that avoids all injury, all the problems with the knee, and you still get a really deep and nice stretch for your outer hips. Take two deep breaths here. And then switch over to the other side. If you want to add in a couple of windshield wipers in between, why not? I always like to soften up that hip a little bit when I'm static and then switch for the other side. If 
you find that your hips are ridiculously stiff, which is more common than you would think, I would add something like a pillow under your right hip so that you get a little bit alleviated from the, from the twisting. So if you feel that you're almost falling over to your right side, then I would use some props that you have close. Uh, anything that's uh, not alive, not a cat or a dog, but a pillow uh, under your hip and just use that as your best friend for stretching. Take three more breaths here. And then sit back up and let's do a bent knee forward fold. So both legs together, turn sideways Mia, yeah. Uh, bent knees, grab your legs as much as you can and fold over your thighs. So the goal here is to get your, your chest or your belly to as close to your thighs as possible. So as much bend in the knee as you need. And then from here, lower your head down, maybe inch your heels uh, a couple of uh, inches forward and relax here. Wide knees are okay. Feet pointing out to the side is also okay. That puts more, uh, that makes it more outer hamstrings than inner hamstrings. So if you point your toes up and that's too much, just let them flop out to the side. Let's take, take five big breaths here and try to breathe into your back. We can breathe into our chest, we can breathe into our belly, and we can also breathe into our back. So try to use your breath to actually stretch the muscles and create some space between your vertebra. A nice relaxation. Um, especially, th like this is a great sequence to do as a warm up before Jiu Jitsu, then you can do it a little bit faster, or after Jiu Jitsu, like a couple of hours after you finish training and when you feel you're scrunching up, this is a great thing to do at the evening to, to have a good night's sleep. Let's take one minute in Shavasana as well. Go all the way down to your back, wide arms, wide legs, take a huge breath, and sigh it out. Just one minute relaxing here, closing your eyes, not thinking much, just relaxing. Take a big inhale and sigh it out. So honestly, how do you feel right now after competing, completing uh, this class? Feels different, yeah? It was just a few minutes, it was just a few simple poses, but it's enough to work its magic on stiff, sore muscles and maybe a stressed mind. So thank you very much, Mia, for doing this. It was enjoyable, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna kick some serious ass at training today. <laughs> it was like a second win. I was so sore and stiff, and now I'm not anymore. I'm gonna butt scoot myself. <laughs> So uh, we have hundreds of videos in the video library. You can check out anything from body specific stuff to whole uh, long flow classes. We have plenty of medium uh, time classes that you can do in the morning, uh, like 10, 15, 20 minutes. We also have plenty of programs that takes you from the first, the first one is just 10 minutes for 10 days, which is everybody can do, everybody can find 10 minutes. And then you go over to the startup week. Uh, we have a special uh, series of programs called Yoga for Rocks. So if you thought that this was all hard, we stepped it down a couple of notches for those of you who are extremely stiff. Uh, it's very, very common, so we designate that for you. We have a lot of guys, uh, everything from youngsters who, uh, who realize that yoga is good to uh, older guys who started Jiu Jitsu late in their life and they just feel that they need something to survive training. So this is perfect if you're one of those guys. Uh, so check out the video library uh, and do this class again. If it feels good, then 
why not do it again, all right? See you guys in the next video or see you on the mat. Peace.